So this mat that you have in front of yourself now, it should not be something new to you. You should know this stuff by now. But we have contour lines. And the contour lines that are on the map show the area of altitude joining that entire place. So altitude is the height above sea level. When we look at topographic maps, some of you are able to look at it and visualise it. Some of you are able to even just look at sections and you can notice that the hills go in a circular mountain. So how many of you look at that and you go, okay, there's a hill there? How many of you are able to visualise that? Yeah? So you're able to visualise these shapes are hills. All right. When we look at this map, can anyone see where you would naturally put a river system? You see these two 400s? That would be a natural place for a river to go. The reason why that is, because between two lines of 400 metres altitude, it's going to be pretty flat, okay? The other thing to note between those lines is you've got this mountain that's going to drain into the river, you've got this mountain, or hill, it's actually a hill, that's going to drain into the river, and then you've got this one here that's also going to drain into the river. So there's a natural flow in that area that you would probably put a river. Okay. The next thing we're going to have a look at is the numbers on a topographic map. So the numbers are in what? What unit of measurement? Metres. Okay. They are always in metres. It does not matter what topographic map you look at. So if you're looking at a topographic map of Mount Everest, it's going to be 8,884 metres. It's not going to be 8.8 .8 kilometres. All right. So it's always going to be in metres. So that's one important thing. The next thing is we've got this here. We've got all our numbers have an interval. 500, 600. So what are the numbers on this topographic map going up or down by? Hundreds. Okay. All topographic maps have got a different interval. So you've got to figure out what the interval is on the topographic map. But it's going to be a consistent interval throughout that entire map. Okay. The reason why that is important is because if you look at things like A... Sometimes they don't tell you what it is. That's a very common question in exams if it's a topographic map. What is the altitude at point A? Altitude, height above sea level. So in this case, what do you think the altitude of point A would be? Who thinks 600? Okay, so you guys are right because this is going uphill. The reason why you know it is getting uphill is because it's getting smaller as you go toward the centre. That hill has got a big base, so there's the base, and then it's getting smaller as it reaches the top. So you can look at the shape of the land to figure out the direction that hill is going. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a cross section from C through to F. All right. So place it exactly, so from C to F, place it exactly like that. All right, great. Every single time, so what we're going to do is start doing our graph for our um, cross section. So every time you see one of your contour lines touch your piece of paper, so every single time you see it, mark exactly where it has touched your piece of paper. So see how I'm doing this? Every time it touches your piece of paper, mark it. Only from C to F. Only from C to F. So you mark down that that is C and that is F. Next step. Now, obviously, you could do this next step as you're going, but I just wanted to, as a training tool, teach you the two steps, okay? So the next thing you do is you have a look at the altitude that that line is... Um, giving you. So for C it is 300 metres. So you need to indicate for each line the height above sea level that line is. Now before you get going with that I need you to have a look at something for me. Don't just get into the habit of going okay this one's 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. That happens a lot. People just get on a roll and start not looking at the numbers. I need you to note that this one here is a circle. So it's going to be the same. It's part of a circle. So that's going to be 600 and that's going to be 600. 
Same with this one, that's 500 on that side, but if you follow that line round, it's going to be 500 on that side. Does that make sense? So I wanna make sure that you're looking at the numbers. If you need to lift up the corner to check the number, lift up the corner and then place the piece of paper back down again. So I need you to identify those numbers. So. Now that we've got this piece of paper with these lines and numbers attached to them, we need to do something with them in order to make our cross-section work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw a line as the base of our graph because we are now going to be graphing something. Because our cross-section is between points C and F, we need to make sure the bottom of our graph or the x-axis is only that long. So the easiest way to do it is to either freehand it the way I'm doing it or get a ruler, which is better, and to just draw your line from one point to the other. So I'll just erase that little bit there and I'm done. So if you want to glue this into your book, glue it in your book. Just allow nine lines before you glue it down and I'll exp explain to you why I'm saying nine lines. Okay, so just allow nine lines and then glue it into your book. Now we've glued that into our book, we need to have a look at our scale for our chart because ultimately a cross section is going to look like a chart. So we need to work out our scale. The easiest way to work out our scale is to figure out what the contour interval was. So we said earlier it was 100 metres. So the easiest way to figure out our scale is 100 metres. This, that's what this one's going to be. The next thing is you need to look at the highest and the lowest number. The highest number that we have down here is 700. The lowest number that we have down here is 300. Okay, 7 and 300. I would suggest that you don't have to start your scale at 300. There's enough room to start it at zero, okay? But if you were doing Mount Everest at 8,000 metres, you probably wouldn't start your scale at zero, okay? Because otherwise you're going to need a piece of paper that is really big. You probably also wouldn't do an interval of 100 metres either. You'd probably be looking more in the 1,000 metres or every 500 metres if you were going to do Mount Everest. Otherwise, again, way too much room is going to be used. So what I would suggest is from here, you draw your line and now you go, that's zero. And then you go 100, 200 on each line and you go up until you finish your table. So can you guys do that now? me and do you like your tables and graphs to look really super neat closing the box but it is not essential to close in the box obviously I don't use a ruler on explain everything okay but close it in make your t your graph look a bit neater or you can have it open-ended but I think it looks neater this way when we're graphing it there are a couple of ways that you can do it if you are able to draw a line by using your finger, draw a line using your finger, okay? I'm just straight line challenge and we all know that, okay? So what we've got is we've got 300 down the bottom here and we've got the marker for 300 metres. So what we do is we go up that marker and we draw a dot at 300 metres. The next thing is 400 metres. So from that marker and we go up to 400 metres. Like I said, if you're not straight line challenged like I am, you don't have to draw the line going up, okay? So you just do it all the way along. Yes. 
Just start from 300. Yeah. Yep. Right. Have a look, and once we've done this, if you have a look at it, you've actually now drawn the shape of the mountain. Please, when you join the dots together, don't use a ruler because mountains don't have perfectly straight lines. Even if you are one of those people that really like straight lines, don't use a ruler because I've never seen mountains with perfectly straight lines, even if there's been a landslip. But now you've got the shape. So the idea behind a cross section, like I said, was if you're looking at a topographic map, it, unless you're very good at visualising, it's not easy to be able to look at a topographic map, look at the landform in front of you, and be able to say to yourself, this is where I am. Because sometimes topographic maps can look a bit confusing. The idea behind a cross section is that you can look at a topographic map, visualise what those numbers will look like if they're put in a row, then look up and go, yep, that's the mountain range I need to be going toward. So it gives you a, more of a visual idea about what that mountain range would look like, or it might give you an, a very flat area. So if you're looking at a mountain range and your cross-section is quite flat, you know that you are facing the wrong direction where you are.